Welcome to Fearless Friday. I hope you guys enjoyed last week's video. I get a lot of guys who hit me up over the text telling me how they love last week's video because they can see the night and day difference between me when I first started doing the work to where I am now as a coach. So if you haven't watched last week's video, go back and watch it. There's uh, clips of me in my earlier years with the Fearless doing the model work and you can see how nervous and rigid and shy and just kind of anxious I was. Um, even apathetic at times too. And it's a really good contrast to how you yourself might look once you actually change and transition from who you are into who, are you, who are you're wanting to become, which is I hope an attractive, solid, grounded man, uh, which is what we teach here. So go back and watch that video if you haven't. I feel like it's really great at giving you that contrast. You can see just your own potential and where you can be today versus where you can be, let's say in a few months time or a year's time. So very valuable in that sense, okay? Now today I wanna to talk about stillness, all right? Had a great meditation this morning and I thought about it, I said, man, I love doing approaches, but I love when I'm calm in my approaches. Cause let's be honest, I'm not always calm in them, right? There's sometimes I do approaches and I'm a little, a little nervous and I'm a little antsy a little bit of anxiety is coming up and I'm not always in that position to ground myself and relax and contain. And I would say for the most part, yes, but I still do have my days. I'm only human, right? So I want to talk to you guys about stillness and just the benefits of it when you're interacting with a woman. So stay to the end of the video. I'm gonna drop the three benefits of stillness in your interactions, but let's talk about stillness right now as, as a whole and what it is. So if you're like me, especially earlier on, you go back and watch those videos, you'll see I had a lot of anxiety running. I had a ton of anxiety running. I didn't feel safe in interactions. I didn't feel safe interacting with people. Like on a very subconscious level, I was wanting to jump out of my own skin, right? And so I never truly felt relaxed in my own body. And because I didn't feel relaxed in my own body, I could have, I never could have really had a conversation with a person, not a really connecting, valuable, effective conversation with the person. And there's no way I could have attracted a girl in that state either because I was always running from the tension. Now, the more work I did, especially the model work, which was essential in the growth process because it gave me a chance to facilitate what being still in my, in my own presence was like. And had I not had that opportunity to do that, I wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't have known how attractive a man can be when he's being still. And so you'll notice that the more still you become, the more relaxed in your body you are, right? Now, I'm not talking about stillness like stand there and be rigid and don't move and just hold that because that's not really rigid, right? That's walling off at the heart, closing off your emotions. In a sense, you're not wanting to feel anything, but you, you need to feel anything. So how can you be still and still feel, right? That's what a lot of guys are struggling with. What that really is, is that's you learning to open up your heart, open up, you know, we talk about the chakras, open up the stomach, open up the, your turn on, your pelvis, open up um, your, feel your feet, ground yourself. And so that you can be still and still take in everything and still be functioning, still be breathing. It is very funny because I talk to women and women are like, guys, when they're talking to them, it's like they're not breathing. And I can relate to that. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to be in front of a woman literally not breathing because I'm so nervous and so scared of her reaction. Now, in order to get to the stillness, there does need to be a little bit of work done, right? If you have hangups or fear around just being still in front of people, then that stuff needs to be looked at because the truth is this, the more still you become or the more still you try to become, like if I tell you to go out and talk to that girl, but just be still and relax, your stories are gonna come at you like a freight train, like, like that, right? Because now that you're being still, everything's going to try to knock you off your kilter. <laughs> and that's just the way it works. And so in order to get better with that, how do you be still but not be affected or reactive to your 
your emotions or your thoughts or your stories. And that's what I was talking about a second ago. That's you opening up, opening up the heart, opening up the stomach, opening up the solar plexus, opening up the, the legs, the turn on, letting the energy run through your body completely. So on your journey to learning to, be, to become more grounded and more still, you'll have to learn how to accept a greater amount of your emotions and not become reactive to that. But in doing that, you also notice or learn that you can be non-reactive to your emotions and you can accept a lot of what you think you can't accept right now. If I'm in an interaction with a girl and let's say I'm nervous in the first three or four seconds of the interaction, what I'm doing in that first three or four seconds is I'm just opening everything up and I'm just letting it affect me. So I'm letting the potential for rejection affect me. I'm letting the potential for a really harsh reaction to affect me. I'm letting the potential for her to hear me talking to her and just ignore me. I'm letting, I'm letting, I'm open to that affecting me, right? Because if I don't allow myself to open to it, I'm going to close off. And then if I'm closed off, nothing in that interaction is going to connect. Nothing's going to hit. Nothing's going to reach. And so I have to be willing to open myself up to feel all the fear that I don't want to fear. Okay. So anyways, guys, let's go for it. If you guys haven't hit like and subscribe, go ahead and hit like and subscribe because you're going to miss out on a lot of great content that we're constantly putting out. I'm putting out these videos every Friday. Brian's constantly throwing out videos every week, multiple times. Tuesdays are live calls. We wouldn't want you guys to miss better opportunities to become more solid guys. So go ahead and hit like and subscribe and don't miss the content. Grow fast, grow strong. On to the meat and potatoes. Let's talk about the benefits of being still in an interaction with a woman. Now, the first benefit of being still when you're in the interaction with a woman is that you ground her. Or let's say we're not even talking about women just, we're talking about everybody, even your guy friends, even the guy you just met, people, groups, you ground and contain them. You create a safe container, a safe space. Look, they don't even know you're doing it, but the more calm and relaxed that you become in yourself, the more still you naturally get, and the more still you are in those interactions, you'll notice that if people that you're initiating interactions with start off anxious, which they will a lot because you're a stranger and you're approaching them, people get a little anxiety, right? They, they don't know how to be sometimes. They kind of go into their little their program. And, and they see you being still and relaxed and talking to them and calm. They ground out themselves too, right? They don't do it consciously, but they come from that high level of anxiety and reactivity down to where you are to this calmness. And then they can speak straight across to you and not from uppity uppity in their voice or up in their body, right? And they can relax. And before they know it, they left that interaction with you and they feel a lot more grounded than they did before you approached them. So in a lot of ways, what you're really doing is you're leaving people better off than you found them. But also in the context of women and dating and approaching, when you're still and you're creating a safe space for a woman, they feel that. They feel that you're safe, right? And I don't mean like safe, like friend zone friendly safe. I mean like, oh, this guy's safe. I feel, I feel calm. I feel relaxed when I'm around here. There's something about his energy. It's, it's so calming. Right? I get women to tell me that all the time. And that to them is attractive. They don't want a guy who's reactive. They don't want a guy who's up in his body. They want a guy who's calm, can feel, can ground himself out. right? Because they know that you can handle things. If anything, if anything in that interaction turned awkward, she knows that you're not going to get reactive to it. If she told you something that may make another guy reactive, she knows that you're not going to be reacting to it and you're probably not going to judge her for it. And that feels really good to women. There's another sub benefit to being able to ground other people. And this is pretty cool because when you're talking to women and women are nervous, a lot of guys don't catch that women are nervous and they kind of just end up bulldozing the girl. They end up self-rejecting or they end up uh, just kind of, they're, they're, they're really rejecting themselves in a way. Just leave it at that. Right? They're really self-rejecting in a lot of ways. Now, when you become more still and you become more relaxed, you can see everything from a bird's eye view, right? You can see that a girl is nervous. 
you can see that maybe she wants to say yes when you when you ask for her number or ask to take her on a date, but she's saying she's saying no because it's her programming, right? <laughs> I see this all the time. Women give into their programming. Humans give into their programming, but especially women when it comes to guys wanting to date them and wanting to hang out with them. The walls go up. It's it's a defense. They have to stay safe some way, right? So I respect that. But at the same time, the more still you become, you start to see that, oh, I can see that she actually really does want to take my number or she wants to go out, but her programming is telling her not to. So now that I can see that, I can call out the elephant in the room. I can be like, okay, look, I can see that you want to totally like holding back right now. What's going on? Talk to me about that. Like, be real. What's going on? You got a boyfriend, you've seen somebody, um, you're nervous, you're unsure, you're uncertain. Like literally just call it out, right? And what you're probably going to get is she's probably going to giggle, she's probably going to laugh. Or she's probably just going to drop whatever wall she is and just become very real with you about what's going on. And then from there, and from there, then you can actually take it somewhere. But until that's been established, it's really hard to. So in that, you can also see inconsistencies in girls' stories. And you notice that when girls get very nervous around you, they don't lie, but they get very inconsistent, right? They might say they have a boyfriend or they might say that, oh, they're busy and they can't do this. But as you talk to them a little bit more and more and more as you ground yourself, you start to realize that she starts to kind of unravel everything that she says and starts to say the opposite of what she said before. And I never take it personal. I just realized that, okay, maybe she was nervous, her defense came up, I get it, but I want the real person. And you get a lot of the real person when you start to become more still. So anyways, guys, little tidbit there. On to number two. It gives you space to be an active listener. Kind of touches back on what we talked about in the first one being able to see inconsistencies, being able to see is she nervous, is she telling the truth, that kind of stuff, right? Now, the more still you are, the more calm you are, the more relaxed you are, you'll start to notice that you're listening, but you're listening on a very subconscious level. So you are actually a step, of, I always say a step, a layer deeper than what they're telling you on the surface, right? So I never really take what girls say at face value. I'm always looking at the sub communication and I'm always hearing, I'm always hearing the sub communication. I'm always hearing the words they're not saying, all right, the body language, what do they actually mean by what they say? Like, I'll give you an example. I was talking to a girl the other day and she said, um, we were sitting there, we were talking on the steps and talking for a couple seconds. She, she was like, I haven't had sex for, I haven't had sex for three years. And I was just like thinking to myself, I said, okay, that came out of nowhere. We weren't talking about sex. We weren't talking about anything like that. We weren't even flirting. And <laughs> I looked at it and I said, yeah, it's great. It's a long time. But obviously, I know what's going on, right? I can see it. I was like, okay, this, con this conversation is being taken that direction. I don't want to go that direction, but I see it. And that's interesting because now I know she's open to it probably and that she doesn't mind going there. And so that was the layer deeper that I saw <laughs> that probably most guys wouldn't get right away, right? It's kind of like when Brian says, if a girl brings up sex first and you didn't bring up sex at all, there's something there that a lot of guys just don't catch, right? But to the guy who's a natural already, it's super obvious. It's like, oh, okay, I get what's going on here and I'm choosing to either move forward with it or not. So helps you become an, a better active listener. Now let's go into number three. Number three is you become more attractive to women. Now, I talked about this in the, in the first one, but I want to elaborate on it a little bit more. The more still you are in your interactions, and I've seen this, there's a point in the interaction where you notice the girl gets attracted to you. Like, it flips on like, like that, right? And usually what follows that is that she's asking you questions about yourself. She wants to know more about you. Right, and then she's leaning in more energetically. She's more invested in you than she was initially when you first stopped her, like in the first 15, 30 seconds, right? And you'll feel it, you're like, okay, she's kind of coming on to me. She's kind of um, just giving me more of the vibe, right? She's giving me more of the energy. And from there, that's when things can happen. So as you're being more still, what's really happening is that she sees you as a guy who can handle things when they hit the fan on a very subconscious level, right? If you're calm and you're not being reactive and you're not being phased by how she's being or how she's responding or reacting to you, she sees that as value. She sees that as, oh, this is a man, this is a man and you want to be seen that way. 
But when you start to do the work on yourself and you start to naturally develop that, that stillness, you know, either it's via meditation, via releasing, revealing, which we have a ton of videos on our channel about revealing and releasing, you start to develop that stillness. You start to realize that when you're in front of people, you don't need to be reactive, right? You accept yourself as you are and you can handle whatever's coming at you. And that is attractive as hell. So I hope this video helped you out. Find ways to tap into your inner stillness. For me, it's meditating. For me, it's releasing. For me, it's doing the model work. It's putting myself in those tense situations and then working out all the kinks that I have, all the stories that I have. Like, you know, if I'm going out to go talk to a girl, you know, on my, dis on my self, negative self-talk stories coming up, like, am I good enough? You know, I'm not attracted X, Y, and Z. And being able to just embrace all that, let it in and welcome it and just start to become the calm center guy that I actually am at the core which you guys all have it, right? None of us are different in that sense. We all have it. It's just about you learning how to tap into it, okay? So anyways, guys, I want to see you guys become the most still, grounded, calm, confident dudes that you can possibly be because I love seeing that. I love hearing your stories about successes that you guys are having because it shows me that you're changing and the work is actually working for you guys. So anyways, guys, love shooting these videos for you. Go back and watch last week's video that I did on authenticity. You'll see a lot of my model work in there but just the topic in itself about being authentic and, and giving authenticity, how it attracted and makes you as a man, but also how it brings you a better quality of woman, right? Woman, woman of value and not the type of woman that you don't want to be around. The more you level up, the better the women that show up in your life. Go back and watch last week's video. I'll see you guys next week and remember, only the confident really live. Peace.